Well, welcome. Today's lesson is on soil formation. If we were to look at soil formation as a whole, you're going to see kind of two things going on. First of all, they're factors. These, these five factors really dictate what's going to happen in the processing side of things. So I want to teach you though a formula before we get started. It's a really important formula that, you, that you'll uh, need to have. That way you remember these, these factors, these five factors. And it's called uh, CLORPT. And I know, I know, I, I resisted learning it as well, but once, because it is kind of strange and kind of funky, so once you learn that, this little formula, it really does help you understand, like CL is climate, O, uh, basically we're talking about organisms, R is relief or topography, the shape of the land, um, also P is for parent material, and T, of course, is for time. Those five things, factors, affect the process, and you'll see how in just a moment. But let's take a little bit uh, a look at the, uh, the factors. The first one is climate. Climate has a tremendous impact on the, the soil formation. For instance, the weathering rates are greatly enhanced when you have a high temperature and also high precipitation. Things like the rainforest are a good example uh, of that. They have a very thin soil, primarily because it has a high rate of decay, but also it, things weather very quickly in that kind of environment as well. As you can see there, if you have a higher temperature and higher precipitation, the weathering the weathering rate also will go up to enhance uh, physical, but in particular chemical um, weathering. All right. Um, the one thing though that kind of kind of bears that out, if you look at this graph, and let me see here, let me go ahead and put it right. If you look right here, tropical rainforests have the highest amount of energy. Um, per acre than anything else, where the lowest is the desert. And why is that? Well, it's the combination of high temperature and also high uh, precipitation. We have four soil types. They're here from California, and in particular, kind of around the Central Valley area. And uh, could you tell me which ones are from forested areas, areas that are high in organic matter, and also have a lot more rain than, in, let's say, the valley? So take a second. And tell me which two of them are from the valley and which two of them are from the forested area. So let's take a look. Uh, so uh, the forested area, if you said two and three, you'd be right. And if you take a look at two and three, you'll notice, first of all, the darker color, which means there's more decay and more of the organic matter making its way in, especially a lot of the tannins if they're around things like uh, oak trees. And, and if you take a look here, here's an acorn that's stuck right there about six inches in. And you see roots and remnants of roots even far down into the B uh, horizon. So that's definitely a for, from a forested area. And then one right here, if you take a look at number three, you'll notice that little kind of band of kind of lightly colored soil. That's some clay. So that's an E layer or E horizon. And you have twigs and you have some more roots in there. So yeah, two and three are from forested areas that get a little bit more water, actually a lot more water. And of course, because of that, they have many more trees, which has more organic matter. Now, animals have a, a tremendous impact because they keep mixing and moving soils and, and, and adding things such as manure and uh, other kind of nutrients within the soil. If we first of all take at the little bitty animals, the microbes, you'll notice that nitrogen fixation happens in legumes. And it, while it's in the soil, it will release some of those uh, uh, nitrogen compounds, the nitrates and the ammonias. And, of course, the nitrogen gas is, is kept in these little nodules, uh, these little nodules that are right there. Those little things are nodules. They have bacteria in them that actually help manage the nitrogen cycle. And then even trees and are, are cars, of course, getting into the action. Oak trees in particular, they are a, a terrific, terrific generator of all kinds of organic matter. I have a huge 300 oak tree just on the side of my house. It's constantly dropping stuff. Now we get to R, the R factor, or topography, the way that the ground is shaped. So when we look at topography, it has a huge impact on the profile. For instance, up in the Sierras, the highest part of our cross-section through California, you'll have all three of the horizons. And typically you have an A-layer, 
a, a fairly thick B layer, and of course the C layer. And that's fairly stable. So those are the oldest soils you're going to find here in California if you cross section from east to west. In the slope or the foothills, you're going to notice A, B, and C layers. But the Bs and the As are kind of thin because of uh, erosion. It's, it, it is uh, always kind of uh, in the pathway, some kind of erosion, whether it be water, whether it be wind. And in the valley floor, you have uh, also very uh, much thicker, uh, thicker soils. In particular, the topsoil tends to be a little deeper. The, the B or subsoil tends to be uh, um, deeper as well, because um, and, and different kinds of soils too, Pr primarily those for alluvial types of soil, especially around the rivers and the creeks here in the Central Valley. On this one, this one says that, that, that basically parent materials will dictate what kind of soil this is going to produce, like shale. Uh, uh, shale is basically the precursor to clay materials. And then, of course, sandstone, well, sand. And then we have uh, basalt. And basalt tends to, uh, because it's extruded, air pockets get added to it as it comes out of uh, the volcano or uh, uh, out of the, the lava. And when it does that, those little bitty holes create avenues for water to flow. So it's a little easier to, to weather. Whereas granite, on the other hand, it doesn't come out and mix with the air. It stays usually underground, so it kind of solidifies and, and uh, crystallizes, so it's a little bit more dense and thicker, and it resists weathering. So granite is going to produce a different type of soil than, let's say, basalt or pumice. Now we get to tea. Tea has to do with time. And time, as you can see on this timeline, soils, as they mature, will take on more and more um, horizons because there's more weathering going on. There is more what we call translocation as well as transformation of soils to create deeper and thicker horizons. So I want you to watch the second video. The second video is going to have to do with the processes, the processes uh, of how particular soils are made, the factors or the things that kind are the kind of the playmakers, whereas the processing uh, goes on to make the soil property. So come back for part two of how soils are formed. Thank you very much and we'll see you in the lab.